Ontario Power Generation celebrates a big milestone this year with the 100th anniversary of the opening of the Sir Adam Beck One Power Station. At the time, it was the biggest power station in the world, bringing attention to Niagara Falls as the center of power in North America. Kent Keeler of OPG joins the source. Though it is 100 years ago, and that seems like a long time, Kent, it's actually a bit humbling to know that it was only 100 years ago that this power station went into service. It's interesting. We do have some smaller stations that are older, but it is, it's, I feel like it's an honor for me every time I get to go down there and see a lot of the same kind of scenery and equipment that's been down there and, and operating for 100 years. When it was built, it basically was the biggest one in the world. So people started looking at Niagara Falls as, as really this modern place. How did it come to be? Back in 1906, um, the Hydroelectric Power Commission was developed and, and really the idea with there was developing electricity as, as more of a common good. So we had some private companies that were, that were generating electricity, but the province wanted this to be something that, that everybody had access to at, at an affordable rate. So they started building transmission that was connecting these private companies. And then really in 1913, we we're starting to see increasing load, increasing demand for electricity in the province, especially around Toronto and southwestern Ontario. So the decision was made that maybe the Hydroelectric Power Commission should make their own generating station. And, and obviously Niagara Falls was an attractive place to do it. Um, you know, you had World War One going on. The, the effort there was was increasing the demand. And then following the war, obviously the, the post-war industry um, demand was picking up. And so you had all of these things coming together and the decision was made um, to look at proposals for a possible new generating station at Niagara Falls. So there were already a few a few stations there. Obviously, it's an attractive place. And and after consideration, they agreed with the proposal to to use the Niagara River and the Welland River and then build this large power canal around Niagara Falls and build the station where it is now down closer to Queenston. Am I right in assuming that back when this concept came about, a lot of houses did not have electricity yet? We weren't all living with electricity in our homes. Yeah, that's correct. And, and I think that was part of the role of the Hydroelectric Power Commission was to sort of create some of that demand. So we had a lot of industrial load, um, but, but the commission was sort of out promoting electricity as something that, that homeowners could use for lighting and for their appliances. And also for cities to build electric railways and, and those kind of things that all of this was, you know, was a good thing, but it was creating more demand than we had capacity for at the time. You mentioned the war and just coming up with this concept during a war seems to be so far-fetched. The Spanish flu hit in the same year that construction started. Did that complicate things? Yeah, it certainly would have. It's interesting. There's, there's not a whole lot documented on it when we look at kind of the pandemic we're in now and, and how much is documented about it. But certainly Niagara Falls was no different than anywhere else. And, and 1918 was the height of construction of that station. And so when you when you look at, you know, 10,000 people working on this project and and I think numbers around, you know, the Niagara Falls History Museum talks about 1% of the population of the falls, you know, dying and being impacted by it. So certainly with all the people on the on the construction site, there would have been an impact. Um, I think like we see now, there there was reports that, you know, things like churches and theaters would have been closed for weeks, but the the construction on the canal and on the station continued on. And, you know, there it was reported there was challenges with with people, you know, being sick and unable to work, but the project was was critical enough that it continued on without any interruption. In St. Catharines, there's the Fallen Workers Memorial for the Welland Canal. Were there a lot of lives lost building this huge structure in Niagara Falls? There was, and I mean, the way we operate now, certainly one life would be too many. And so when you think about back then, it was, you know, there's, there's numbers reported, approximately 90 people that they've got documented that lost their lives on the project. And um, really it's, you know, well, it was something that was probably a bit more accepted than it is now. Certainly that's one of the things that, that we do think about, um, over the past hundred years is, is how many people paid a higher price than others for, for the construction and sort of for the greater good of, of having this electricity in Ontario. There are still two of the original power generating units in operation right now. Is that true? 
So the last two units that were, were the old 25 Hertz units are currently being replaced. So they've been removed from the station and there's two unit, two new units going in in their place. So um, we're expecting that those two projects to be completed by the end of this year. And that will bring us another um, just over a hundred megawatts of, of capacity in the station. So it's interesting in the station, you see a lot of, when I look at pictures that are, you know, we're starting to pull out of the, the opening and, sort of what was around all the people that were there for the opening. When you look in the station, you do see a lot of, of similarities and some of the same equipment, but certainly the generators have, have been refurbished over the years and, and they do look a little bit different. And these last two new ones will, be, will bring us back up to 10 operating generators in the station. Sir Adam Beck one was designated as a historical site, a national historical site back around, I think it was 1990. With these last two old units, will they be preserved somehow, somewhere? Yeah, so you're right. It was 1990. It was federally designated as a as a historical site, um, and that is so. One of the considerations that we we went through when we were planning the project to, to replace these last two units was how we can preserve that. You know, knowing that we need to replace them to to have the electricity capacity, how can we preserve the the historic value of these kind of engineering marvels of their time. Um, and so we've we've done some work to digitally document what was there and and through 3D modeling and that kind of thing. And we're also looking at we've we've kept some of the the big physical equipment and looking at how we can we can use that to to create something that people will be able to come and look at and just see the scale of of what was kind of the greatest engineering feat at the time. Going back to that opening, and when you look at this, it was really a celebration of cooperation between Canada and the USA at the time, and that continues today with the, I guess, the agreement that still lasts this treaty. Yeah, correct. So that's kind of how we we decide how we share the water that comes down through the Great Lakes, and and really what makes Niagara Falls a great place to to generate electricity is that you've got this significant height difference between the two Great Lakes and and one tributary where it's all coming down. And so obviously everybody's familiar with the falls and that's what makes this an appealing place. And again, that's on both sides. So New York has kind of developed generation along their side of the border at the same time. And we've, we have had the benefit of, of the treaty between the two countries and that cooperation is ongoing. And, and there's, you know, kind of daily communication between the stations and, and controlling the flows and doing things this time of year, like breaking the ice and, and working on the river together. It's incredible to think that uh, over a hundred years that this structure is still being used to create electricity. Yeah, it is. And again, like I said, it's an honor every time we get to go down there and, and sort of be a part of that a hundred years later. And hopefully for there'll be lots more people that will get to do that for in going into the future. Ken, congratulations on the anniversary. Thank you very much.